I'm here today with our number one columnist for Investor Intel for 2014, Jack Lifton. How are you today? I'm great, Tracy. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good. And I'll tell you, there's so much in the uh, news right now. Even the Wall Street Journal is call covering rare earths again because of what's <laughs> happening with China. Do you yeah. want to explain to our, our audience what's happening? What, what's happening is that the, the Chinese have uh, morphed their quotas into an, into an export uh, tax system. Actually, in my opinion, it's gotten more prohibitive, the export of, of rares in China, not less. But somehow or other, the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times, two uh, newspapers which I really thought understood this space, seem not to. Uh, the investor intel writers are much more attuned to what's actually going on than, than those uh, hallowed uh, publications. But let me point out that the Chinese are tightening their control of their rare earth production. In particular, they are so overcapacitized in light rare earths, they don't know what to do with the stuff. That you can have. It's the heavy rare earths which they began restricting at the end of the first decade of the century, which are now coming under much tighter control. Since there is no production of heavy rare earths outside of China, you can bet that they're always going to be more available and cheaper to Chinese domestic producers than they ever could be to the tiny number of, of non-Chinese who actually use raw materials of this type. So uh, whatever these guys, what I, what I would do, and I, I'm an avid reader of the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times. I've been subscribing to them for probably as long as any of my viewers have been alive. But I'll tell you what, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Other than that, right on. Jack, you most recently wrote, I thought, a brilliant article about how some of the largest corporations in the world are now looking at actually investing in rare earth ventures. Can you tell me yeah. a little bit more about this? Yeah, because, Tracy, as I've said before, because of my non-disclosure agreement with many companies, I really can't be specific. But let me tell you that I've seen more activity by global 1,000 corporations getting involved in the rare earth space at the anchor point, the mine, to develop the the mineral deposit development than I've ever seen before in my life. And, and I, I think I, I hit on in the article what's, what's going on. They are no longer interested in the Wall Street, Bay Street ups and downs uh, uh, with very little regard to actual supply and demand. What's happened is, as, as we mentioned a little earlier in this interview, the Chinese are really tightening up on the critical rare earths. It is the time has come now when non-Chinese users of these materials for things that cannot be manufactured in China, uh, don't tell anybody, military, cannot depend on the Chinese. They never wanted to. Now they actually can't. And so this is a new world, very large corporations with strong defense issue, you know, contingents are looking very hard at this. In fact, some of them are already investing. I said in my article, forget about the alliances and the groups where large corporations come to see who's got the bigger car. That's all they're doing in those meetings. The individual corporations that are ruthlessly competitive have realized they've got to secure their supply. This is very good news for the key rare earth juniors that, that we know and love. Well, I'll tell you, that's probably the most uh, exciting answer you've ever given me, Mr. Clifton. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be a little more specific. Say I'm oh, yeah? an investor, which I am. Okay. And yeah. I'm looking at the rare earth space. Uh, and, of mm -hmm. course, I think uh, we should also include graphite and lithium and yes, molybdenum yes, and tungsten yes, in yes. here and vanadium, and, uh, the critical material. Okay. Right, 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 right. And say I'm an investor and, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. How would I prioritize which investments uh, should be at the top of my, my to-buy list for 2015? Well, well, I would say look for the, the producers whose major output is critical materials such as graphene, lithium uh, salts for battery use, and the heavy rare earths. Keep your eyes on those. I, I can only think of about 10 companies, and you know that 
uh, I'm a consultant to a lot of them. And, and that's the reason I don't want to be too specific because I, I do have secrecy agreements and competitive advantage uh, means that they, they'd like to keep this information quiet. But I'm going to tell you this, uh, and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Forget about light where Earths. There's plenty of it. There's plenty of production. There's even plenty of capacity outside of China. Don't worry about those. Nobody should worry about those. Start worrying about heavy rare earths. And, and we've been stymied in producing because there were always going to be the back end, a byproduct, something else, even of light wares. What's happened now is the market has filtered out the low, we now have remaining the lowest cost, most efficient of the heavy rare earth themed rare earth companies, and every one of them is focused on non traditional, lower cost processing and on downstream uh, manufacturing, fabricating. They, this is it. They finally all figured it out. I hate to say it, but I've been saying this for quite some time. They finally figured it out. And the large corporations, with especially those with defense uh, contracts, have figured it out also. So what what are the things that that and, and I, you know I, in the past I've sort of poo pooed military demand, but the point is the military demand is now growing dramatically in the West and in China. That's the big thing. The Chinese also are going to make smart weapons and armor alloys and. Uh, graphite loaded composites uh, for lightweight armor and lightweight clothing and use lithium batteries. The Chinese, of course, are going to do this. So they are now growing rapidly as a demand source. Do you, does anyone honestly think that, that, that a Chinese company is going to say, well, we, we're going to be fair here. We'll export these things to the to the capitalists so that they can bomb our cities back to the Stone Age like they say they're going to do. Or are they going to say, you know what? We're going to conserve these valuable materials for our future consumer society and, for, of course, for the People's Liberation Army. That's exactly what's going on. Chinese demand for these critical materials is rising like crazy. Forget about copper and, and lead and iron. All that's wonderful. They built an infrastructure with that. It's there. But now they're building an army, a navy, and an air force. And boy, are they going to need these materials. And is that going to put pressure on? And guess what? I don't know anybody who gives his last dollar to a starving man. All right. So I guess I can make a, a joke here, Jack, about whether or not now, you're now a consultant for the Department of Defense. <laughs> well, no, I, but, but I'm, I, I'm not really. But let's say that I, I, I've, I, I'm very pleased and impressed by the fact that the Department of Defense has really become active in this area. They know what they're doing. Please, everybody, keep in mind, the Department of Defense doesn't run mines, and they actually don't build tanks, planes, submarines, or rifles, anything, or machine guns, anything like that. They contract to have that done. They are now aware of the difficulties some of their prime contractors are having with securing supplies of materials. And so it's no longer a secret, and quite frankly, they don't tell all these stories to the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times. You have to listen carefully and actually go there and talk to them and, and be involved. Um, they come to the people that they need rather than – they don't respond when you go to Washington and say, hey, does anybody know where the Department of Defense is? They don't do that. And is that the Pentagon over there or, or is that uh, the Washington Monument? They don't respond to that. They come to you. Okay, so – I need an update really quickly now, on Malaysia. Yeah. Well, uh, Malaysia's blueprint has been published locally, but there's been a problem. There's been massive flooding and 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 real civil uh, unrest problems and, and brought up brought upon not by political unrest but by the the flooding in Malaysia. So we're going to have to wait a little while longer uh, to hear what Malaysia is going to do next. But I do want to emphasize that Malaysians have announced they have found. Five ionic absorption clay deposits in Sarawak. That's a part of Borneo that's Malaysia. So look for news coming out of there this year.
Jack, thank you so much for updating us today. As always, we appreciate your insight, but I have to ask you, I was very impressed when Eric Noyrez, the former CEO for Linus, joined the board of directors for Texas Rare Earth Resources. Were you responsible for that? Oh, yes, I, I did have something to do with it, Tracy. Uh, when, when Tony Marchese decided to ask Eric, I, I was the one who asked Eric directly first, and he was very positive, and then Tony took over the negotiation, and everything has worked out wonderfully. I can't imagine a better uh, addition to the board of any rare earth company than Eric Neuress. Well, I have to admit, having uh, met Eric on several occasions, I happen to be a, uh, a very big fan of his as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jack, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Tristan.